Dear students, this is the continuation of previous lecture video Effect of negative feedback or the properties of negative feedback In this video, we are going to cover the last three properties Bandwidth extension, increased input resistance and decreased output resistance Okay, let's start with bandwidth extension property as we know that bandwidth is the difference between two cutoff frequencies those are lower cutoff frequency FL and upper cutoff frequency FU so it is the range of frequencies between FL and FU due to the introduction of the negative feedback in an amplifier the bandwidth is extended or increased okay so for that we can consider the diagram this is the frequency response of the amplifier with feedback this one is the frequency response of the amplifier without feedback from this diagram we come to know that the bandwidth of the amplifier with feedback is increased from without feedback range so here FL and FU both represent the lower cutoff frequency and upper cutoff frequency for that amplifier without feedback here FL dash and FU dash represent lower cutoff frequency and upper cutoff frequency for the amplifier with feedback so in case of lower cutoff frequency the value is decreased due to that negative feedback in case of upper cutoff frequency the value is increased due to this negative feedback so we are going to Prove this property. The first step is to find the lower cutoff frequency of feedback amplifier FL dash. Okay. The gain at low frequency can be expressed as AL is equal to AM by 1 minus J FL by F. So here AM represents the midband gain. AL represents the gain at low frequency without feedback. Here FL is the lower cutoff frequency without feedback. Do you all understand? This is the relation between AL and AM. So in this low cutoff frequency gain, the ratio is FL by F. Here this F is the operating frequency for that amplifier okay next we are going to find out the gain of the amplifier with feedback at lower cutoff frequency it is represented as ALF that is equal to AL by 1 plus AL beta as we know the value of AL we can substitute that value in this formula then we can get ALF is equal to AM by 1 minus J FL by F that is the value of AL divided by 1 plus AL is replaced with that value AM by 1 minus J FL by F into beta. Okay. So next we have to take this value as a common one here. For that we can multiply this one with this value. So ALF is equal to AM by 1 minus J FL by F divided by 1 is multiplied with this value. So 1 minus J FL by F plus AM beta divided by this value. Then we can divide this denominators. Okay. Then we can get the value as AM divided by 1. We can write in this order 1 plus AM beta minus j fl by f do you all understand this okay in the next step we can take this 1 plus am beta as a common one from this denominator if we are going to take this value as common then this value can be divided by this one so we can write am divided by 1 plus am beta as a common one so this term becomes 1 minus j this FL by F is divided by this value. So FL by F into 1 plus AM beta. Do you all understand? Okay. So this expression can be written as ALF is equal to AMF divided by 1 minus J FL dash by F. Where AMF is nothing but midband gain with feedback. Its value is AM divided by 1 plus AM beta. 
So this value can be written as AMF with feedback. Okay. Then the denominator is having that value 1 minus J FL dash by F where this FL dash is nothing but FL divided by 1 plus AM beta. That is the lower cutoff frequency with feedback. Do you all understand now? So this term FL divided by 1 plus AM beta can be replaced with the term FL dash. Okay. The equation FL dash is equal to FL by 1 plus AM beta clearly shows that the FL dash value is always less than FL. Here FL is the low cutoff frequency without feedback. FL dash is the low cutoff frequency with feedback. So with feedback means at low frequency range it is decreased. Okay. That means the negative feedback decreases the lower cutoff frequency by the factor 1 plus AM beta. So here you can see this. This is the frequency response means this one is for without feedback. So its range is CFL. Here the frequency low cutoff frequency for this feedback amplifier is decreased by FL dash is decreased by the factor 1 plus a beta. So next we are going to find out the upper cutoff frequency of a feedback amplifier F u dash. Okay sometimes it can also be represented as F h dash. It can be represented either as high cutoff frequency or upper cutoff frequency both are same. Okay. For that we can consider the gain at upper cutoff frequency without feedback. Okay without feedback means mid band gain divided by 1 plus j f by f u. So you have to remember for this high cutoff frequency its value in the denominator is plus and f by f u. Okay. Then the gain at upper cutoff frequency with feedback is obtained as a h f is equal to a h by a 1 plus a h into beta. So this can also be represented as U. U as well as H both are same high cutoff frequency or upper cutoff frequency. Okay. Next we are going to replace the value of this AU as AM by 1 plus JF by FU. Similarly in the denominator 1 plus AU is replaced with the value AM by 1 plus JF by FU into beta. Then we can take the LCM value here. 1 plus j f by f u plus a m beta on the whole divided by this value. The denominators are divided each other. Then we can get a u f is equal to what? a m by 1 plus a m beta plus j f by f u. For further simplification we can take this 1 plus a m beta as a common one in the denominator. Then the term becomes a m by 1 plus a m beta into this term becomes 1 plus j f by f u which is divided by 1 plus a m beta. So this expression can be written as a u f is equal to that is the gain of feedback amplifier at upper cutoff frequency is equal to a m f divided by 1 plus j f by f u dash. So here we can group this value. So this is nothing but mid band gain with feedback that is represented as a m f. Here this f u multiplied with this 1 plus a m beta is represented as f u dash. Okay so this is the gain of the feedback amplifier at upper cutoff frequency range u dash is equal to f u into 1 plus a m beta. From this equation we can understand that that f u dash that is the upper cutoff frequency with feedback is always greater than f u. So it is increased. Okay the upper cutoff frequency of the feedback amplifier is increased by the factor 1 plus a m beta. Thus the overall bandwidth is increased. Do you all understand? The next property is increased input resistance due to negative feedback. In general, an amplifier should have high input resistance and low output resistance so that it will not load the preceding stage. 
so in order to avoid loading effect it should always have high input resistance okay so for that we can consider the basic structure of feedback amplifier here that actual input given to this amplifier is vi and the current flowing through this amplifier is represented as ii okay so here we can consider ri is the input impedance of the amplifier without feedback okay if there is no feedback simple amplifier circuit in this case we are giving vi is the input and v out here the current flowing through this amplifier is ii okay so in that case that input impedance is vi by ii so next we are going to introduce negative feedback to this circuit at that time what will happen due to this negative feedback the concept vf is introduced at this feedback signal the negative feedback in an amplifier increases the input resistance we are going to prove this concept so here input impedance of the amplifier with feedback is denoted as rif that is equal to vs by ii so here we can include this source voltage also do you all understand whenever the feedback is introduced in amplifier we can include the source voltage okay so here we know that vi is equal to what now vi is equal to vs minus vf from this we can get the value of this vs that's what given here okay as we know that vi the actual input to the amplifier is equal to source voltage minus feedback voltage since it is a negative feedback so from this we can get vs is equal to vi plus vf substitute this value in this formula rif is equal to vi plus vf vf can be replaced with the value beta into v not correct then this v not can be replaced with the value a into vi so in this one vi is common we can take it outside then rif is equal to vi into 1 plus a beta divided by ii as we know that vi by ii is nothing but ri we can replace this value as ri finally we can get the input impedance with feedback is equal to input impedance without feedback multiplied with the factor 1 plus a beta thus the input impedance or resistance is increased by the factor 1 plus a beta in a negative feedback amplifier do you all understand that so next one is decreased output resistance here we can consider a small signal equivalent circuit of this amplifier so inside this amplifier we are having this input resistance ri output resistance ro so here the current is ii the amplified output is here avi okay current through this ro is io ro is the output impedance or output resistance without feedback ROF represents the output impedance with feedback. So this RO is the without feedback value inside this amplifier. Whenever we are going to introduce the negative feedback, then this output impedance value is decreased. So we are going to prove that concept here. So first we have to find out the voltage drop across this RO. Voltage drop across this RO means what? I O R O that is the voltage drop across this R O that is equal to here it is V naught that is the overall output voltage minus A V I okay so that is the voltage drop across this R O do you all understand this one so I O R O is equal to V naught minus A V I next we have to assume this V S is equal to zero if you are not giving input or the source signal what will happen if you are not giving source supply signal only giving this feedback voltage then this vi becomes minus vf because it is negative feedback so this vi becomes minus vf then this term becomes v not plus a v f do you all understand this the voltage drop across r not is the I O R O that is equal to V O minus A V I. Here we can assume V S is equal to zero. Then V I becomes minus V F. 
then v i can be replaced with that value minus v f means minus into minus plus a v f. v f is nothing but beta into v naught. Then we can take this v naught as the common one. So v o into one plus a beta. Then we can move this one plus a beta to this side and here i naught to this side. We can get v naught by i naught is equal to r naught by one plus a beta. V naught by i naught is equal to R O F. That is the output impedance with feedback. Nothing but R O by one plus a beta. The output resistance is decreased by the factor one plus a beta.